We start with two groups of warring tribes beefing over land borders. Now the kingdom is split between the Greens and the Blacks. And before you can say, sounds like current day politics between the Reds and Blues, both the entire communities of the Blackwoods and Brackens all end up totally deadied. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Elsewhere at Dragonstone, Rhaenyra buries her loyal Kingsguard alongside his naughty twin. Whilst Aunt Rhaenys reckons that soon no one will remember what started all this trouble. Like, was it when the blonde Sprog was beheaded in his bed in pyjamas? Was it when Lucius Malfoy killed the soy boy Mophead for bourbon in his dragon's face? Or perhaps it was way back when little Luke took Eamon's eye. Ugh, <laughs> what ifs. But maybe if you just go talk to your ex-best friend turned stepmother foe, we could avoid all-out war and total decimation by dragons and she... But she just shrugs and says that bitch stole my pointy chair, bro. So stop whining on about pussy old peace talks and shut up about it already. Also elsewhere, new hand of the king Sir Criston arrives late in court. And after Alison bollocks him for that failed assassination by undercover twin scheme last epi, the court moans about the plebs beefing all over the gaff, including the Brackens and Blackwoods in the opening. But King Aegon's just loving the fact that blood is being spilled in his name and to justify his place on the throne. And Sir Criston also wants him to do some war in himself. So he suggests going on down to the Riverlands and Harrenhal to convince the undeclared plebs to join their team and she... Or else! Meanwhile... Turns out Mycenae did in fact warn everyone about Sir Arik trying to sneak in undercover last epi, and hence why the other twin was able to get up to the Queen's boudoir in time. And so she then demands a place in court in return for effectively saving the Queen's life. Naturally, said Queen's not quite sure about putting her uncle hubby's ex-squeeze and also a literal traitor on her court of trusted advisers. But as she knows the movements of her nemesis, given she was a spy and also wants revenge on her opposition, she figures the enemy of my enemy is my friend and stuff. Later, Rhaenyra tells her stepdaughter Raina that she's bloody useless around here given she has no dragon after Lucius Malfoy stole it from her back when they were kids. So now gets to be a glorified babysitter by totally cucking out and taking the Queen's young kids to hold up in Pentos given it's about to kick off around here whilst her sister gets to stay and get a taste of the action and all just because she has a massive fuck off dragon and she... Speaking of giant fuck off dragons, Damon flies over to the ruins of Harrenhal and easily claims the place. And the pussy old inhabitants, including old and busted Sir Simon Strong, instantly pledges fealty to this utter mad lad who just burst in and took over the place without shedding a drop of blood. Cause turns out these lot are on their side anyway, given Harrenhal was the castle of King Viserys' ex-hand Sir Lionel Strong. And Simon hates the new eggy king and his ilk, given that scheming Lord Laris fella is on their side. Because that treacherous gimp was the one what totally burned down this place. And also killed his own father and brother and two of Simon's relatives. Oh, death cold. Unfortunately, this place is in a right sorry state. And totally crumbling down all around him. And after Damon says he'll totally cough up the dough for repairs, he now wants to try and turn the Riverlands to their side. Given they have a fuck ton of soldiers who haven't picked a team yet. Because whoever controls the Riverlands will have a massive advantage in the upcoming war. And Simon's just like, yeah, sounds good, bro. Back at King's Landing, Sir Criston's freshened up with a new haircut now he's settled into his new job. As Alicent soon introduces him to her Ponzi brother, Sir Gwain. And she tells him to take him along with him, given he's well annoying and also a ginger. But over at Dragonstone, Rhaenyra's court totally wants vengeance for last week's assassination attempt, where the Queen almost got poked with a pointy shaft in her own bedroom, but not in a good way. But said queen don't really want to resort to unleashing the dragons, given they're the equivalent of nukes in this world. And the unspoken threat of mutually assured destruction is much better as a deterrent than actually using them and destroying everything and everyone, including themselves in the process. Naturally, the warmongering gammons are well vexed at being denied the option to strike back. So they hilariously suggest that she sod off to a safe space now she's clearly so vulnerable, and instead let them get on with the big boy war planning sheet. But she just says, stop talking about taking action on my behalf in my absence and thus dressing up literal treason as being in my best interest and shut up about it already. So the next day, Rhaenyra sends a resentful Lena off on her babysitting mission, along with some fragile new dragon eggs to look after in case everything goes tits up and they all get decimated here. And also to persuade some bird called Lady Jane to come help him out while she's at it. 
and her sister just says, lol, have fun babysitting two brats and a bunch of eggs whilst I stay here flying about on giant dragons, and just try not to fuck it up, bitch. Elsewhere, Scheming Lord Laris tells the king that the plebs down in the town are starting to think he's a right pussy -o, and that his mum's actually running things up here with Eamon by her side. So Egan tells Laris to sort him out and keep an eye on things, whilst his immature frat boy mates, who have been recently promoted to his closest king's guard, just laugh about getting their virgin mate laid with a bunch of hookers tonight. And they continue to childishly lark about, till the king reminds them that they swore an oath of chastity for this new job, which very quickly wipes a smirk off their gormless faces, and which unfortunately means their unlucky mate's going to be a virgin incel forever. Aww. Anyway, later that evening at the local boozer, some drunken rando called Ulf White insists that he's actually the son of Balon the Brave, aka the bastard brother of Damon and Viserys, and therefore uncle to the one true queen, Rhaenyra. And if any of the current king's people find out, then he'll be totally deaded in she. Naturally, they just laugh in his face, given he hasn't even got silver hair, and who then almost has a bleeding heart attack when the king himself coincidentally appears behind him for a piss up and almost overhears his treasonous bragging. But luckily, he's more interested in getting blottoed, and soon gets distracted by walking in on a nudie naked Aemon and totally ends up humiliating his brother, who spends his evenings crying and curled up in the lap of a brothel madam. The next day, Sir Criston totally bollocks that Ponzi ginger nut for taking a bunch of his men off to find a local B&B &B to spend the night in, because they're meant to be camping off grid in the woods and she. But said ginger nut don't really want to sleep between the mucky mud and bugs, but soon has bigger things to worry about, and rather literally, after realising they're totally exposed when they spot Baylor and a massive dragon moon dancer out on patrol, and almost get their butts lit up whilst just about making it across the tree line before the giant lizard freak can scorch the fuckers. An embarrassed and shaken Sir Gwain then agrees to slum it, and also learns a very valuable lesson about staying out of wide open fields when your enemies have giant dragons roaming about and stuff. But unfortunately, Bela goes running back to her mum, and totally tells the call all about how Sir Criston and a posse of Ponzi posers are heading to Harren Howell and the Riverlands to totally turn people against him. And the gammons once again demand that she let loose the dragons and go scorched earth on her enemies who constantly keep doing all these bad things and also making them look like right mugs on their own turf. But she just says she'll think about it. And they just can't believe she's going to waste time fannying about. And this is exactly why they didn't want a fanny on the throne in the first place. Anyway, after a random witch tells Damon that he's probably going to die here at Harrenhal, and after experiencing guilt-ridden hallucinations about having indirectly killed Prince Jaehaerys, and what also features a surprise cabbio from that wheel pulled in a wig bird again, Myceria advises Rhaenyra how best to get to Alison, given she reckons a face-to-face -face convo is the last remaining option to avoid all-out civil war which will end up killing everyone on both sides. And after being told that the only way into the heavily defended city is to dress down and uglify yourself worse than the female lead character in the current day AAA video game. Oh good lord! She ends up smuggling herself in dressed as a nun. And indeed comes face to face with that Alison Bird what totally stole her pointy chair and she... Well, side by side at least. And they soon have a girly catch up about what's gone on since they last saw each other toward the end of season 1 when they launched that naughty coup thing and also killed each other's kids and she... And also about how Rhaenyra's dad didn't even mention her before he died of his scabs. But he did mention, however, something about Aegon being the prince that was promised. And that's why Alison assumed that he meant that he now wanted their son Aegon to be king, rather than his daughter, who he already declared as his heir years before. So she totally usurped her throne in good faith, bro. But a flabbergasted Rhaenyra just says that that was just part of an ancient story that Viserys used to tell. And he was clearly just repeating old familiar lines in the midst of his death throes, you silly ho. And now feeling pretty mortified that she's essentially sparked a civil war over mishearing an old dying man's garbled nonsense, Alison instead doubles down on her son's claim, despite Rhaenyra's desperate pleadings to just admit her mistake and save all the realm from looming bloodshed and just all based on a silly misunderstanding. But predictably, her ex-best friend turned stepmummy foe don't really want to concede that her eggy son what wanks into the sky ain't actually the rightful king after all. Because they just had a massive public crowning ceremony, bro. And that would be super embarrassing and stuff. Not to mention how much dosh they blew on the decorations of catering. And besides, there ain't nothing she can do to prevent said war anyway. So stop with a borderline blasphemous fancy dress and shut up about it already. And that's it. 
Now, that's episode three. Now, my favourite part was when Egon said that he'll join Sir Criston on his trip with his dragon, Sunfire. But the court all pretend it's too risky for the king and he needs to be kept safe. Before insisting he's... I'm as fearsome as any of them. Whilst they all just cringe and totally try to stifle their scoffs. Anyway, on to episode four. We start with Matt Smith in a wig, aka Prince Damon, demanding to speak with House Blackwoods to get a proper army already, after invalid Lord Grover just sent his scrawny soy boy grandkid to tell him he ain't interested in getting involved in his warrings. Whilst Rainis says that that baldy Sir Alan fella should be given a medal for saving her hubby's life off screen instead of being hidden away fixing up ships all day. But Corley says stop whining on and totally nagging me at work and shut up about it, cause I'm off my 45th Matrix Reloaded rewatch, bitch. Meanwhile, the Grand Maester delivers the guilt-ridden Queen Alison a morning after potion, giving that horny Prince of Persia fella keeps slinging his pork sword up a pink sheaf, and says he had no idea that that viscerous fella wanted Aegon on the throne either, which just makes her feel even worse. Whilst over at Dragonstone, the Council of Gammons grow restless after constantly being blue-balled and not being able to strike back at their enemies, especially given the Queen is currently off trying to negotiate pussy old peace talks whilst dressed as a saucy nun or some sheep. Meanwhile, Sir Kristen Cole has captured even more territory and is now out here beheading old granddads and stuff. And over at King's Landing, the Eggy Prince is fucking fuming that Damon has taken Har and Hal by simply walking over there and having a passive aggressive dinner with that fat Simon bloke. But Laris just says chill bro, cause... That castle is more crippled than I am, your grace. But the king is then even more incensed after realising his own brother has been planning the war effort to take the castle of Rook's rest behind his back with Sir Kristen. And then even further undermined and humiliated when Aemon mocks his immaturity and lack of mastery of High Valerian in a foreign language in front of the whole table. As the king then beclowns himself by essentially asking the equivalent of Don Day S. Biblioteca. And Aemond is just loving getting revenge on his eggy bro for when he publicly mocked him last week when literally caught with his pants down cuddling up to a local brothel madam. And just says, this castle up at Rook's Rest is easy pickings bro. So you just get back to larking about with your new Kingsguard mates, what were clearly promoted beyond their position just so you can hang out with your buddies all day and leave the big boy war plotting to me already. Upstairs however, that creepy Laris fella pays a visit to his sexy crush Queen Alison who's nursing a right stomachache after doing what she should have done during her sex sessions in the first place and swallowing down a man's yucky gross liquid, and says, I know it's only been a few weeks since your old hubby died of scabs, launched a naughty coup to usurp the throne, lost a grandkid to a grubby rat catcher and just realised it was all for nothing anyway, given you simply misheard the king waffling on about the other older King Egon on his deathbed. But you should just cheer up a bit, love, because you're currently moodier than Kristen Stewart, IRL, and you're clearly not even on your period. Anyway, after Damon encounters that Scottish witch again over in the Harrenhal dungeons and who reckons this place is totally and literally cursed, he promptly has hallucinations after taking a suspicious drink from said witch and then sees visions of his deaded ex-wife Lena during his meeting with the Blackwoods. You know, the bird what burned herself to a crisp last season after failing to give birth out a butthole. At first I was confused, now I'm totally lost. Meanwhile, Prince Egon gets totally bollocked by his mum for being such a drama queen and whining on about nobody respecting him and she. Because he's more belittled round here than that Rodney Dangerfield fella back in the day. As she says that just having a crown on his noggin don't mean he's got any brains between his ears or any words worth listening to. And he just can't believe even his own mum is now getting in on the disrespect. Well, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't no respect. As she says, you're a king in name only, pal. Because it's the court and his advisors what know what they're doing. So when you're in said court, just sit your ass down, nod politely and shut up about it already. And before the literal king could burst into tears at being undermined by literally almost everyone in his fucking castle, including his own female birthing parent, Sir Kristen tells his men to stop pissing about and get ready to attack. But that ginger Gwaine fella reckons it's fucking madness to attack in broad daylight and in the middle of such a wide open space. Because last time they stood around in an open field, they almost got roasted, and not in a Comedy Central way. But Kristen just shrugs, and tells him to stop being a total melt already. Meanwhile, Rhaenyra returns home safely after risking her life trying to garner peace talks and failing miserably, as her counsel and even her own son Jace totally bollocks her for sodding off and risking everything they've already sacrificed. But she just says, chill bro, 
because I needed to be sure that there was no other way of ending all this beef. So now we'll go full beast mode and unleash the fucking nukes already. Given Sir Kristen is currently attacking a member of their council Lord Staunton and his castle at Rook's Rest, despite surely knowing that they'll be forced into a response and probably send all legions of hell their way. And before you can say, It's a trap! The Queen says she'll take her dragon Cyrax over there to smack her bitch up. But Rayne says, Bitch please, you've got a few more seasons of this show to make for HBO. So let me go on this utterly mental suicide mission, given I'm a supporting character and also only contracted for two seasons anyway. But she totally does, and hilariously, so does the king himself, as he promptly gets drunk and starts gearing up to join Kristen's battle with his massive pet lizard, Sunfire. And a little later, Ray and his flies in on a giant fuck off dragon Maylees and starts tearing shit up, after rudely interrupting Sir Kristen's siege on Rook's rest. But unfortunately, she falls straight into Sir Kristen's cunning plan, who soon sends a signal to Prince Aemon to totally ambush her with his own giant fuck off dragon, Vega. Well, that is until his dopey brother turns up in the sky drink dragoning after getting his feelings hurt all day and now trying to prove he's a big man and a proper king what can do a bunch of warring and shit. And instantly getting himself and poor Sunfire munched up by Maylis and that 50 year old granny on her back. While Sir Kristen totally shits himself after realising his cunning plan has gone tits up given the king himself has gone and meddled in his and Aemon's meticulous scheming. But luckily, said Aemon fella turns up with Vagar just in the nick of time. But also, unfortunately, he thinks it's now a good opportunity to get even more revenge on his older bro for humiliating him in the brothel last week, taking the throne what he really wanted and generally just being a big meanie since they were kids, and proceeds to literally roast his own brother, mainly for exposing his mummy issues and she. And before you can say, holy fratricidal ideation, Batman, the king falls out the fucking sky as the two blonde relatives have some sort of real life Pokemon battle in the air as their epic battle results in the equivalent detonation of a nuclear devastation. And just when Rayanis and poor Malis think they've gone and lost that naughty Vega what keeps doing a bunch of bad things, the giant fuck off she beast somehow does a sudden ambush on the pair of royal wallies, and it looks like it's curtains for the queen who never was and now would definitely never be, as Vega crushes the life out of poor Malis right in front of her best friend and helpless owner. And before she can say, was I a good giant fuck off dragon? You were the best giant fuck of dragon. As both the princess and beast fall down to their deaths, as Aemon just revels in the fact that this is now the second time in weeks that he and Vagar have somehow done a surprise sneak attack and killed an unsuspecting Targaryen relation. And we end on a seriously injured and disorientated Sir Kristen, wandering both through the devastated landscape of post-nuclear ruin and the incinerated bodies of his own men, as he then walks in on Aemon, potentially about to finish off his own brother after they find the fucked up king and his dragon half dead in the burning woods. And that's it, that's episode 4. Though my favourite part was when Lord Staunton's guard was like, We must get you to cover my lord. And this fella's just like, no, no chance mate, because there's about to be a once in a lifetime real life giant dragon fight out here, and instead just promptly busts out of the popcorn. But anyway, that's the plot and that's a lot. Considering in that bell thing, so you don't miss episodes 5 and 6 when they drop. Tell me if you like this show in the comments, if you have time. And I'll roast you in the next one.